Good morning, culinarians. Uh, Chef Keith here. Today we're going to go over in, in our culinary book, Chapter 2, Sanitation Safety. Um, for those of you that are in Chef Corey's Sanitation Safety class, a lot of this stuff you'll go over. Um, there are a few small differences between the two books. I'll try to point those out as I go along. Um, but for the most part, um, we're just going to touch briefly on some of the sanitation stuff. Um, as I go through this chapter, I'm going to be pulling a lot of the information out of the book. And um, so if you follow along in your book as I'm doing this lecture, I'll refer to the page numbers and where I'm talking about in the book. So if you want to highlight, take notes, whatever you want to do to study for your exam, by all means do so. But your exam will be coming from stuff that uh, we go over in this book here. So uh, follow along in your book. As I said, I'll, I'll make reference to pages where I'm at so you know, uh, so it's a lot easier to follow me as I'm going through this book here. Um, starting out on page 16, we'll talk about food hazards. Uh, food hazards, first thing to talk about is uh, contaminated food. Um, food is contaminated, it means to be harmful substance not originally present in it, okay? Um, in other words, contaminated food is not the food that is not pure um, in, the, in the food product. Um, four things they talk about here, biological hazards, chemical hazards, physical hazards, and allergens. Um, those are four key things in, in you know, your food contaminants. We'll get into that a little bit later in this chapter. Um, they talk about pathogens, bottom page 16. Pathogens, microorganisms, single cell, Microorganisms that cause the disease are called pathogens. So you got your microorganisms, when they cause a disease, cause you to get sick, they're now called pathogens, okay? Pathogens come in bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites, all right? First off, bacteria. Bacteria is everywhere. Uh, bacteria is all over the place. Uh, in the air, water, ground, food, skin, inside our bodies. Um, various different places to find the bacteria, but it's all over the place. Um, there's harmless bacteria, beneficial bacteria. Um, harmless bacteria, of course, is the stuff that's going to make you sick. Uh, beneficial bacteria, uh, like in yogurt, there's bacteria in yogurt that's beneficial. Um, so there are beneficial bacteria for you. Um, undesirable bacteria, disease-causing bacteria, pathogens. Um, page 17, they talk about intoxications, intoxications, infections, and toxic uh, infections. Intoxications caused by uh, poisons from the toxins, infections caused by bacteria or other organisms, and then toxin uh, infections also caused by bacteria that get into the body and grow, disease caused by poisons and bacteria into your, into your body. Um, so those aren't the very good stuff. This is stuff you want to try to avoid. Um, bacteria growth. Bacteria grows by uh, doubling um, food conditions for perfect growth. Um, you got food, moisture, temperature, acidity, oxygen, um, and time. Uh, for those of you going through sanitation, Chef Corey might talk about Fat Tom, F-A-T, uh, T-O-M. F as in food, A is in acidity, T is in temperature, uh, Tom, T as in time, O is in oxygen, and M is in moisture. So fat Tom is a good way to remember uh, what conditions this stuff needs to grow. Um, page 18, we get into uh, Potentially hazard foods or TCS foods. TCS foods are basically ready to eat foods. Potentially hazard foods. So if you see TCS, they are potentially hazard foods, uh, ready to eat foods. Um, foods for TCS foods. Um, some of the ways we can get uh, uh, infections from TCS foods. We talk about poultry, fish, shellfish, eggs, um, bean sprouts. Um, get your vegetables in make sure you wash your vegetables a lot of vegetables are coming from the ground you know you got your cantaloupes and and uh, tomatoes when you get them in wash the outside because a lot of times if you have a tomato or if you have a cantaloupe you're going to slice that product you're going to slice through the skin a lot of times there's 
is that bacteria and stuff on the outside of it. So I want to try to wash some of that stuff off before you slice it. Because if you slice the melon and it has that bacteria on the outside, guess what? That bacteria is on the inside now. So you want to wash that stuff off. Same with uh, tomatoes. You can have sliced tomatoes to put on your sandwich. If there's bacteria and stuff on the outside, if you don't wash it properly, get some of that stuff off, that bacteria will go on the inside of that tomato. Talk about on page 18, garlic and oil mixtures um, to, vent, to prevent pathogens from growing in there. Garlic and oil mixtures are fantastic. Um, if you get into making them, I, I enjoy making them all the time. I, I've made herb uh, oils and garlic oils and shallot oils and stuff like that. It's a great tool to cook with. But if you're going to make them, keep them refrigerated. Keep them out of temperature danger zone. You got garlic. You got some fresh garlic. You put it in oil. Let it sit in there for about a couple weeks or a couple days to a week. And that, that garlic flavor is going to really come out into that oil. So when you go to cook with that oil, you're going to get that strong garlic flavors, which is going to be great. But unfortunately, you know, the, the garlic grows in the ground. You got a lot of bacteria, a lot of, a lot of stuff in the ground. So if you put that garlic in the oil, and it sits on the counter at room temperature, it's going to be in temperature danger zone. In temperature danger zone, bacteria is going to start growing. So if you're going to make these oils, put them in the refrigerator, store them in the refrigerator, okay? That way it keeps the bacteria from growing because you keep it out in temperature danger zone. Temperature danger zone, of course, is um, 41 to 135. So if you keep it in the refrigerator, it stays out of the temperature danger zone. So if you're going to make oils, keep them in the refrigerator. Um, Page 19, we get into um, uh, protection against bacteria, keep bacteria from spreading, stop bacteria from growing, kill bacteria, um, stop bacteria from growing, just like I said with the oils, if you're making those oils, keep them in the refrigerator, keep bacteria from growing. If you're gonna kill bacteria, you wanna bring uh, your product up to 170 degrees to kill the bacteria. Um, page 19, Talk, they have a table here on page 19 about the bacterial disease uh, table. Talk about botulism. Botulism attacks the nervous system. Um, it's usually pretty fatal, so you don't want to get cause anybody to get some botulism on you. Usually, typically, botulism you found in canned foods. If you come across a, a canned food that's dented, usually botulism is going to start growing in there. So you want to throw that can out. Don't open up that can. Um, Staphylococcal, uh, staph infections, usually from food workers. Um, you're going to get a staph infection from a food worker. Um, usually comes in the nasal area. That's why when, when someone tells you to sneeze, you sneeze into your elbow. When you sneeze, that stuff will spread out and get all over the food. So if you're going to sneeze, make sure you cover yourself up. Um, e. coli. Um, Another dangerous thing they talk about in here. Um, going over on page uh, 21, we get into viruses. One of the things they talk about in viruses is hepatitis A. Hepatitis A comes from shellfish, uh, oysters, clams. Um, usually you're going to get hepatitis A if you harvest your, your oysters or clams from uh, waters that are polluted, that aren't very clean. Um, the sole purpose of an oyster and clam is what, what, what's their purpose? It's to filter the water. So if they're filtering water that's contaminated by sewage or something like that, it's going to get into the oyster or clam. Go to eat that raw oyster or clam, you're going to get sick. You're going to get to hepatitis A. That's why if you want to get uh, fresh oysters, I love oysters. I get them off the, uh, off the uh, Gulf of uh, coast of North Carolina. Waters are perfect out there. You got that salty water and you got the fresh water mixing on the coast of North Carolina. Um, really makes for a good oyster. I get them from up north in, in uh, Maryland or Virginia. Some good waters up there. You know, you want to avoid getting, you know, your fresh uh, oysters and clams like that from any kind of polluted water. So kind of stay away from that. Be very careful where you get your uh, fresh seafood from. Page uh, 22 get into uh, different parasites, okay? One of the parasites they talk about in, on, in this chapter, page 22, um, trichinosis, if I'm saying that properly, I've been teaching this for years, and I still can't say it properly. So page uh, 22, top of it, trichinosis, um, 
comes from pork products. You want to cook pork to 145. Uh, parasites will grow in pork. You don't really see that much anymore. I know when I started out in the business back in the 70s and early 80s, we used to see, uh, see these parasites a lot in pork products. Nowadays, the way they breed the pork and the way they um, manufacture the pork products now, you don't really see those parasites too much anymore, but you still want to cook the pork at 145, bring the temperature up to 145 and, and ensures that you won't have a problem with the parasites in that. Um, page 24, we get into chemical and, and uh, physical um, hazards. Um, we talked about earlier about the four hazards. Right now we'll get into chemical and, and uh, physical hazards, page 24. Um, physical contaminant uh, contains food objects that are non-toxic, that may cause injury, okay? Non-toxic. You find a Band-Aid in a bowl of soup. You go in a restaurant, you get a bowl of soup, you scoop it out, and woo, man, there's a Band-Aid in there. One of the things that you want to make sure of is if you have a Band-Aid, because cuts happen, you're going to have to wear a Band-Aid. Use one of those Band-Aids that have um, the bright colors on it. In our kitchen here, we, our Band-Aids are bright blue, okay? So if that Band-Aid falls out, falls in a batch of clam chowder, you're going to see that Band-Aid, throw that soup out. No sense of keeping it. It won't go out to the guests. If you have those Band-Aids that are skin color and you can barely see that you're wearing them or the clear Band-Aids, don't wear those in the kitchen, okay? Especially the clear ones. They fall off, they fall in the soup or stew or their salad. No one's gonna see that. It's gonna go out to the guest and the guest is gonna have it. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good thing for your business. Same with your dishes. If you come across your dishes, your china dishes, your glasses, they have a little chip in them, get rid of them, okay? Because if those uh, plates start chipping and someone gets a, a piece of chipped china and they start eating it, it's not only going to hurt their, their, their chip, their tooth, or hurt their mouth, or they swallow it, they ingest it. It could cut up the inside of their digestive system. So you don't want to use uh, chip china or glasses. You got them in your kitchen, throw them out, get rid of them. Um, allergens, page 24. Talk about allergens on page 24. Allergen is a, a substance that causes an allergic reaction. Um, to the person, there's so many people out there that are allergic to so many products now. It's, it's, it's unreal, but we want to stay with some of the basic ones. You know, you got your dairy, you got your, um, seafood, your shellfish, you got your, uh, your nuts, your peanuts and stuff like that. Um, certain things that most people are allergic to, but you said, there's all kinds of stuff that people are allergic to out there. Um, but if, if someone is allergic to, to something and they eat it, it could cause some sort of illness to them, you know, either swelling of the throat, um, upset stomach, you know, sweats. It, it could cause all kinds of stuff. So if someone comes in your restaurant, says they're allergic to something, make sure it doesn't come in contact with their food. If you're running a special and it has a mushroom sauce on it, the special goes up in the window, has mushroom sauce on it, the server comes up and says, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, the guest was allergic to mushrooms. Don't scrape that off and send the product out there. The, the mushrooms are already on there. The person's going to get sick. Make a whole new product over again, okay? If someone's allergic to seafood and they order something coming out of the fryer and you have fried uh, shrimp in that fryer, guess what? You're going to have uh, cross-contamination there, cross-contact contamination, and um, someone can get sick. So if someone orders chicken tenders that's allergic to seafood, get a separate pot of oil cook those chicken tenders in there and cook that, that product in there so it's out of a separate oil. Um, people can get sick from that stuff. So you got to be got to be careful when people say they're allergic to something. Page 25. Um, personal hygiene. Personal hygiene. You come to class in a clean jacket, clean uniform, clean pants, clean, uh, clean hat, get your clean apron on. When you're working, same thing, go to work, clean uniform, okay? When you go to work, if you're working on chicken the day before, guess what, you're gonna have chicken juice all over your jacket, you're gonna have it all over your pants, you're gonna have it on your apron. You go home, you take your uniform, you throw it in the corner, you get up the next day, put the uniform back on. Guess what, that jacket has all this salmonella on it and, and it multiplied like crazy. Now you're walking around and you're gonna get everybody sick just from the clothes you're wearing. Same with bathing. Take a bath, take a shower, clean up after you get done working. When I get done working, 
I go home, first thing I do is I take off my uniform, hop in the shower, wash all that stuff off. Because you're going to carry that stuff on your skin, on your hands, or your arms, your face, your head. You're going you're gonna to bring that stuff home with you. You know, so the first thing you do is when you get off work, take a shower, clean up, bathe every day. Make sure you keep yourself clean. Um, double-breasted jacket. One of the personal hygienes for double-breasted jacket. Everybody has a double-breasted jacket. Say you're working and you spill something on here. Well, guess what? Unbutton it, flip it over. Now you've got a clean side here. You don't have all that, that dirty stuff out there where you're working on, on product. Um, Make sure you have your hairnet on, make sure you have your hat on, you know, make sure you're washing your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, always wash your hands when you come into the kitchen. Um, one of the things that we're really going to push you on is whenever you come into that kitchen, we got three sinks, three hand washing sinks in the kitchen. First thing you do before you do anything else, you walk into that kitchen, you wash your hands, you wash your hands and you set up your station, do whatever you got to do but you need to wash your hands every time you come into that kitchen. Uh, page 26, uh, they talk about washing your hands. Um, wash your hands for 20 seconds, 15 seconds to really wash your hands, but the total amount of time for washing your hands should be 20 seconds. Different things you can do, people sing happy birthday, they count, they do all kinds of stuff, but just time yourself, wash your hands, see how long it takes. 20 seconds, that's how long you have to wash your hands. You wash your hands, Clean paper towel, dry your hands, throw it in. When you go to shut off the water, if it's not an automatic water dispenser and has a, a valve or something on there, use the towel that you dried your hands with and shut it off. Use your elbow, shut it off. Don't wash your hands and take your hands that clean, are clean and shut it off because guess what? You just contaminate your hands after you wash them. So after you finish washing your hands, go to shut off that water, elbow, use a paper towel, shut it off. Page 26, they talk about the use of gloves, rubber gloves in the kitchen. Wear rubber gloves in the kitchen when you're working on ready to eat food, okay? You're making ham and cheese sandwich, ready to eat food, wear the gloves. You're making a chef salad, ready to eat food, wear the gloves. You're making a pizza, putting all the toppings on there, it's gonna be cooked. Do you have to wear gloves? No, if you want to, that's fine. If you're making a stew, cutting up meat, cutting up vegetables, do you have to wear your gloves? No, because that's gonna be cooked. Can you wear your gloves? Absolutely, you can wear your gloves. Just remember, when you're wearing your gloves, wear them. When you're done working on whatever you're working on, take them off. Take your gloves off, okay? Don't walk around the kitchen with your gloves on, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, then come back to your area and start working, and guess, working on your area, because guess what? Your hands are all contaminated now. As soon as you're done working, you can go walk away from your workstation, take them off, wash your hands, put new gloves on. I got to leave the kitchen to use the restroom. Take your gloves off, take your apron off, lay your apron down in your work, work area, go out, do your business, wash your hands when you're done, come back in the kitchen, wash your hands again, and then put your gloves on. You can never wash your hands too many times. If you go to the bathroom, you got your gloves on, you do your business, you come back in the kitchen, and you still have your gloves on, and I say something to you about wearing your gloves, and you say, well, I wash my hands. No, you don't leave your gloves on and wash your hands, okay? I've had to deal with that a lot of times being a chef in the business. A lot of people, for some reason, don't want to take those gloves off, okay? You leave the kitchen, you take the gloves off. You leave your work area and you go do other things, take your gloves off, okay? We've got plenty of gloves in the kitchen, plenty of gloves to switch out. Just continue to switch out with your gloves. Food storage, page 26, bottom of page 26, we get into food storage. Um, one of the things they talk about, you know, keeping food out of temperature danger zone. In here, they talk about the four hour rule. Four hour rule for handling food. Um, if food is in the temperature danger zone for four hours, throw it out. If you're working at an event, you're working at a party, you set out some coleslaw, some potato salad, some macaroni salad, some, some other th items out there, can it sit out there for four hours? Yes, absolutely. When it's four hours is over, what do you do with it? You throw it out, okay? It can stay in that temperature danger zone for four hours, but if it is, you got to throw it out. Same with hot food. It stays in there for four hours, throw it out. Now, looking at the quality of the food, 
if you have a, a event going on, a lunch event going on from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and you set out, you know, your macaroni salad, potato salad, coleslaw, you set all that stuff out. It's 11 o'clock. People come through the line, they eat it. It's cold, it tastes great, everything's fine. Imagine what the quality of that food's going to be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon after it's sitting there for three hours. Now it's going to be warm. Is it going to taste as good as it did at 11 o'clock? No, it's going to taste pretty, pretty nasty. So you want to look at the quality. You spend all this time prepping this stuff. What I always do is I make sure it's on some sort of cold surface, cold ice, some way to keep it cold for that whole time. After the four hours, I still throw it out. Okay. But you want to look at quality over, you know, having it just sitting there. For me, I make sure everything stays cold. You know, it keeps the quality up. I put a lot of effort in, a lot of time in. I'm going to make sure this stuff stays right. But the four hour rule, it lets you keep that food out there for four hours. But the thing is, when you're done, throw it out. Um, page 27 gets into the uh, receiving, dry storage, and freezer part of the uh, uh, foods. Um, on here, page 27 has a little thermometer. You know, of course, it has a temperature danger zone uh, between 41 and 135. Receiving food, if you go to receive food, if you're receiving cold food, make sure it's cold. You know, milk. Uh, chicken, beef, whatever it is, put your thermometer in. If, you have, if you're getting in some uh, proteins, you're getting in a couple pieces of meat, they're going to be vacuum sealed. You're going to get two pieces of product, put them together, and put your thermometer in between it. Okay, it should be out of the temperature danger zone. It should be below 41 degrees. Okay, if you receive product, get some fresh chicken in there, comes in, you put your thermometer in there, and it reads, you know, 55, 60 degrees. Do you want to accept that fresh chicken? That, that, temperature at 55 or 60 degrees no send it back because you don't know how long it's been sitting in that temperature danger zone bacteria is grown in there get rid of it you know they don't let them uh, uh bring it into your kitchen they unload it take temperature it's no good send it back send it back never accept anything from a delivery that is no good if it's no good send it back uh, a lot of chefs say well i can get credit on it yeah a lot of times that credit doesn't come through you know you you you'd want to refuse it out of your kitchen. Plus, if the food's contaminated, you bring in that raw chicken, and it's 60 degrees, there's probably some contaminants on there. Do you want to bring it in and take a chance of contaminating something else in your kitchen? No, I don't think so. So if you take it off truck, it's not a temperature, send it back. If you um, receive something in a dry storage room and it looks kind of damaged, you know, the, that bag's broken or there, there's some moisture on it, we had a delivery one time, the uh, driver brought in uh, some products, dropped them off on a dry storage room. I looked, there was all kinds of water all over the boxes. And I said, I, I can't accept this. this, they're all wet. And the driver told me, he said, oh, that's just the condensation dripping from the truck. The trucks have uh, uh, cooling systems in there. It was a hot summer day, condensation builds, water drips down, I understand that. But I don't want that water on my product. You know, who knows what's in that water? And the driver said, it was just water. It's, it's perfectly okay. And I told the driver, I said, you go in there and when it's dripping that water, get a glass, collect all that water and then drink it. And then you tell me how good it is. And after that, he didn't argue with me. So he took the product back, sent it back. I didn't have to pay for it, but check your product. If it's no good when you receive it, don't receive it, send it back. Okay. You're paying for this product. Don't, don't, don't take any excuses. One of the things I always told my chefs, if if, they're, if you're accepting product, okay, don't accept it if it's no good. You're not going to go to a grocery store, buy a head of lettuce that's rotten, take it home, and throw it out, right? It's the same thing receiving stuff at your, at your restaurant. You're not going to accept something that's no good, pay for it, and then throw it out. So if it comes in the back door, it's no good, send it back. You don't want to pay for it. Uh, freezing, storing, um, proper thawing of product, bottom page 27. You know, if you're receiving frozen food, make sure it's frozen. Okay, bottom line. If you, if you ordered up some frozen shrimp, make sure it comes in frozen. If there's crystals and all kinds of stuff on it, more than likely it's been thawed out and refroze. So you don't want to accept that. Um, if you want to thaw out product, best way to thaw out product is put in your walk-in cooler. Let it sit there for a couple days, depending on how large a product it is. Let's sit in there for a couple days or 24 hours, thaw out, and it's good to go. Uh, other ways to thaw out product, 
is under running cold water. But if you're going to run it under cold water, make sure the package is sealed. Don't take a, a raw chicken, put it in a bucket of, uh, and set it in the sink and run cold water over it. Guess what? That water is going on a chicken. All the flavor from that chicken is going down the drain. Okay? Make sure it's in a sealed Ziploc bag or a container or something. That way, when the cold water runs on it, it doesn't run directly on the product and that flavor doesn't go down the drain. But make sure you use cold water. Don't use hot water. All right. Another way to thaw a product, microwave, you stick it in the microwave, thaw it out. Once it comes out of the microwave, cook it right away. Okay. So thaw it out in the microwave, cook it right away. Last way to thaw a product is with the cooking method. Take a frozen burger out of the freezer, throw it on the char broiler, cook it off, cook it from the frozen state. Chicken tenders, pull them out of the uh, freezer. Frozen shrimp, pull them out of the freezer, drop them in the fryer. You're cooking to, to, um, to order there, okay? Thawing is part of the cooking process, okay? So the four methods, walk-in cooler, running cold water, microwave are part of the cooking process. Uh, page 28, we get into uh, uh, refrigerated and storage of products. Uh, towards the bottom of page uh, 28, it's a little chart there. has for uh, raw vegetables, eggs, milk, poultry, fresh seafood. One of the things on here, if you look at the chart, it says fresh seafood, 30 degrees, 30 to 40 degrees for fresh seafood. Are they talking about getting in fresh seafood frozen? No, they're talking about getting that fresh seafood in as cold as possible. That's why when you receive fresh seafood, and we'll receive fresh fish here for school for you guys to break down some stuff, it's going to come packed on ice. Packed on ice is going to be really cold. It's going to be real close to uh, 30 degrees. So that's what you want, fresh seafood. Keep it as cold as possible when you receive it. Page 29, get into food handling and preparation. Bottom page 29, they talk about minimal internal cooking temperatures. Uh, minimal internal cooking temperatures is internal temperature of any given food product which micro microorganisms are killed, okay? Every product is going to have a minimal internal temperature. Chicken, 165. Pork, 145. They're all going to be different temperatures. If you look on page 30, they have a list of all different temperature for food products. I would make sure you knew what each one of these are because once you get working in the kitchen, and the chef asks you to cook a product at some, some uh, temperature, make sure it's cooked all the way, you better make sure you know how, what to cook it to. Um, eggs, 145. Uh, ground fish, 160. Um, poultry, 165. Um, reheating product, 165. Uh, whole beef, roast, um, hams, 145. You want to cook the product to that, or unless your chef directs you to cook it to another temperature. But rule of thumb is 145 for, for whole muscle meat. Um, if you're going to have leftovers, reheat all leftovers to 165 degrees. So if you cook something, reheat it to 165 to make sure you kill all the, the bacteria and stuff. Page 31, get into cleaning and sanitize. You want to clean and sanitize all products that you use, you know, all equipment that you use, and you know, mixers, tables, floors, everything. Clean and sanitize everything. Um, in the kitchen, we got a three compartment sink. You got your wash, you got your rinse, and your sanitizing uh, sinks for the three compartment sink. The wash and sanitize, or I'm sorry, the wash and rinse sinks. The water should be as hot as you can stand it, okay? As hot as you can stand it. So fill it up with hot water. You can get your hand in there. It's pretty darn hot. You're good. You're good to go. The sanitizing solution that you use is cold water. You want to use cold water in there. We use the quats in there for sanitizing. The quats, if it gets warm, it doesn't work. So if you fill that with hot water using quats, it's not going to work at all. That's why you got to use cold water. You know, cold water for your quads, 200 parts per million, and that's how you do your quad sink. So you got your wash, rinse, and sanitize. Dishwasher machine, when you guys get in the kitchen, I'll show you how to break down the dishwasher properly. I'll show you where the gauges are, show you where the uh, soap dispenser is on there. So with the dishwasher part of this, I'll show you uh, how to use that machine when you come in the kitchen. Uh, washing kitchen utensils, cleaning and sanitizing. Um, if you're using equipment in the kitchen, 
you know, a slicer, Roboku mixer, whatever it is, before you start cleaning it, unplug it. Unplug every machine that you're going to clean. Never leave a piece of equipment in plugged in as you're cleaning it. You uh, get on the meat slicer, you're slicing up some meat, you're doing a good job there, it comes time to clean it up, um, you start taking the unit apart. Well, what happens if you accidentally hit the on switch and you're cleaning it? Boom, there goes the tip of your finger right off. Uh, the meat slicer, the blade rotates so quickly, it'll take the tip of your finger off and you won't even know it, okay? So unplug any piece of equipment before you start cleaning it. Um, page uh, 32, they talk about different sanitizing solutions, chlorine, iodine, and quats. Um, like I said, we use quats in the kitchen here, uh, 200 parts per million. Uh, page uh, 32 and 33, they talk about uh, rodent and insect control. If you're going to have a kitchen, make sure you use a reputable vendor for your uh, rodent control, insect control, Terminex, something like that. Don't use, you know, somebody's run middle fly-by-night pest service because you don't know if they have the latest uh, uh, stuff to get rid of your pests. You don't know if they're bonded enough to get rid of uh, all your stuff in case they do any damage. Um, page 33, um, down at the bottom there, they talk about HACCP, Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, developed by Pillsbury um, back in the 70s, I believe it was, um, for the astronauts at NASA. Uh, astronauts were going up into space, and guess what? They were getting sick. Okay, they're getting food poisoning. So what happens was Pillsbury was one of the uh, manufacturers that was supplying food and they came up with HACCP program hazard analysis critical control point to monitor the, the flow of food from the time it enters your work establishment to the time your guest eats the product. Um, bomb page 33, they talk about HACCP down there. Chef Corey will go over more in detail with the HACCP in your sanitation class. Um, just make sure you're aware of HACCP, okay? It's, it's widely used in the, the industry nowadays. Um, turning over to uh, page 36, uh, workplace safety. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about on day one is safety in the kitchen, you know, from a uniform, you know, make sure you have a clean uniform on, your shoes, make sure your shoes are slip resistant. You know, no shoes with open toes or open heels, um, Make sure they're leather. For me personally, my shoes are steel steel toe shoes. That way if I drop a pot or something big on my foot, it hits that steel toe and I don't have to worry about crushing my foot. Um, but leather shoes, non-slip, um, is what you need in the kitchen. Um, seen several students come through the kitchen the first couple days saying they're fine, they're fine. Next thing you know, they're slipping and falling in the kitchen. That kitchen floor gets slick when it gets wet, okay? So be careful. Slip resistant shoes, safety first. Uh, preventing cuts. You know, the best thing to prevent a cut is make sure that knife of yours is sharp. As we get into the uh, equipment chapter, I'm going to show you guys how to sharpen your knives. If you have your sharp knife, the knife will go right through the product real easily. If you have a dull knife, It'll slip off that product, and that's where you hurt yourself. That's where you can cut yourself. So you got to make sure that your knives are sharp. Um, page 37, burns. Always uh, make sure you don't burn yourself. If you do burn yourself, best thing I've seen come across is if you burn yourself, ice or ice mortar right away. we got an ice machine in the, the, in the kitchen. Um, if you tend to burn yourself a lot, a little thing of ice water right next to your workstation. You burn yourself, you stick it in that ice water right away. It'll keep it from uh, blistering. So ice is the best thing. Ice water is the best thing for, uh, for your burns. Um, preventing fires. Um, on page 37, they talk about class A, class B, class C, and class K uh, fire extinguishers. Um, class A, wood, paper, cloth, combustibles. We have the... Uh, uh, Class, class K in the uh, um, kitchen for the, that'll cover everything in there so we're all set. Hopefully you never get to use the fire extinguishers in our kitchen. Um, page 38, preventing injuries from machines and equipment. 
Um, like I said before, make sure you unplug all your machines that you're working on. Uh, make sure you get everything switched off and unplugged. Wear proper fitting clothes. You know, make sure your, your jackets and stuff are fitting properly. Make sure they're not too big, too baggy. Um, I've seen some some students come around. They have those big old chains hanging off from their pocket, laying down. Get them out of there. Put them in your pocket. Um, you can look cool when you get out of class. But when you're in class, if you have that thing dangling down, it gets caught on something. Say you walk by a table, there's a knife sitting there, it gets caught on a knife, it pulls down, some of them get hurt, okay? No dangling stuff hanging from your clothes. Earrings, guys or girls, if you're gonna wear earrings, wear studded ones in the kitchen, no dangling earrings because they can get caught on something. Um, when you go to pick up a product, pick up a product, kneel down and pick it up. Use your legs to pick up stuff. Your legs are strong. Everybody has strong legs, so when you go to pick something up, scratch down, pick it up, use your legs. Don't bend over and use your back because you throw your back right out. Um, that's it for Chapter 2, Sanitation. Okay, like I said, um, hopefully you took notes during all this, um, highlighted stuff in your book. Uh, your test will come from everything that, that comes right out of this chapter. Um, hold on to your test. Uh, I'll grade them, get them back to you, um, and then uh, see, you, see you in the kitchen.